This story is about my disgusting classmate Pablo. He always hit on me saying things like, Hey pretty girl, too bad that your parents are poor. But don't worry, I can change that. Just come by my house tonight. It didn't matter how many times I told him to stop, it just got worse. And no one dared to put him in his place because his dad was a powerful politician. You see, I live in Honduras and our government is very corrupt. If you stood up to Pablo, he could tell his dad about it and you would be beaten up or worse. When I was 17, I suddenly developed a water allergy. The doctors didn't know why, but whenever water touched my skin, it burned like acid. I made an announcement to my class, telling them to be careful and not to throw any water at me because I'd get badly hurt. But of course, Pablo didn't believe it. He said, Lily's just looking for an excuse not to have to shower anymore. Then he dipped his fingers into the water bucket and splashed water in my face. I screamed and desperately tried to wipe the water off my face, but it was too late. Small rashes came up all over my skin and it was so painful. Pablo still didn't believe me though and said I had created the rashes by scratching my face with my fingernails. Luckily though, after class was over, my crush Simon came over saying, Sorry that Pablo treats you like that. He's a jerk. Are you okay? Oh, sure, I'm fine. Wow, I've had a huge crush on Simon for years, and this was the perfect moment to finally ask him out. Um, by the way, do you want to go to the beach with me this weekend? Oh, that sounds good, but I already have a girlfriend. So I can't, I'm sorry. Oh, stupid me. Of course he has a girlfriend. He was the perfect guy, after all. But two weeks later, our class took a trip to the beach anyway. I couldn't go into the water because of my allergy, of course, so I only played volleyball with my friends, and that's when Pablo came over. How are you? Fine. What do you want? Oh, I still think you're lying about your water allergy, so... That's when he pulled a water pistol from behind his back and squirted water right at my chest. Within seconds, my skin turned red, and then I passed out. I woke up again in a hospital where my mom, who told me I had almost died. But guess who else was there? Pablo. I wanted to scream at him to go away, but I was too weak. He said, I'm so sorry, Lily. I really thought you were joking when you said you were allergic to water. I already told your mom that my dad will pay for your hospital bills, and if there's anything I can do for you, let me know. That piece of garbage. Did he really think he could just say sorry and let his daddy buy his way out of trouble? No way! I pressed the buzzer for the nurse and told her to throw Pablo out of my room. But a couple hours later, he sneaked back in, wearing a cheesy mustache. He also brought roses and apologized over and over again. I gotta admit, it was kinda cute to see how hard he was trying to show he was sorry. So I let him stay and we ended up watching La La Land on his laptop. Maybe he was a good guy after all. He even slept on the floor next to my bed at night because he wanted to be near me in case something happened. Well, and then once we walked out of the hospital together, he kissed me and I let him. I mean, yes, he'd been a jerk, but people can change, right? <laughs> Our first week's dating were awesome. We hung out at his big mansion that had a tennis court and a private cinema. But over time, his behavior got worse again. He pressured me into wearing sexy clothes and forbid me from seeing my friends. Sometimes he'd even order me to come to his house just so he could make out with me. And once he was done, he would kick me out again. I wasn't going to let him treat me like that. But when I told him I didn't feel respected and wanted to break up with him, he laughed and said, I don't care how you feel. I promised my dad I'd marry you once I turn 18, and he hates it when people break their promises. So you better play along and be a good, obedient girl. And trust me, if my dad finds out that you dared to break up with me, he'll think you disrespected our family and he will take revenge on you. But don't you want to marry a normal girl who isn't allergic to water? You always complain that I smell bad because I can't take showers and have to use powder to clean myself. You are pretty and smart. Good enough to give my dad some grandchildren and good enough to entertain me for a while. So I stayed with him, even though he openly cheated on me. I would wake up in the middle of the night in our bed and find him making out with another girl. My life sucked bad until I got into university. Because guess who I met there again? My old high school crush, Simon. We got to talking and I asked if he was still with his old girlfriend. No, I broke up with her after she got drunk at a party and cheated on me. Oh, I'm sorry. But wow, she must be stupid to cheat on you. I mean, you are kind of the perfect boyfriend. That's when, without saying a word, Simon pulled me to him and kissed me. I never wanted that kiss to end, but I pushed him away saying, Sorry, 
We shouldn't have done this. I'm still with Pablo, and if he finds out about this, you'll be dead. I don't care, Simon replied, and we started dating in secret. For a few months, I thought we'd get away with it. But one night, Pablo asked me, I heard you are close friends with Simon from our high school. What? No! He's just in one of my classes. I hardly know him. But Carlos told me he saw you and him holding hands. I responded, Well, maybe Carlos is lying? But I could tell Pablo didn't believe me. You know what I have to do now. And it's all your fault. I started crying, begging him not to hurt Simon. But Pablo pushed me away and ordered two of his dad's security guards to follow him. After they left, I rang Simon and told him to immediately leave our city or Pablo would murder him. Simon understood and persuaded me to come with him, so we agreed to meet up at the city bus station. But before I left Pablo's house, I stole two small Inca statues. I knew they were made of pure gold, so I hoped they'd helped me and Simon to start a new life. We met at the bus station and fell into each other's arms, kissing passionately. Then we took a bus to Mexico. The whole journey, I worried about Pablo coming after us, but we arrived safely. It took several months to sell the statues, but we got a lot more money for them than I expected. We bought a small house in Mexico, and soon I got pregnant and gave birth to our son. Everything was perfect until one night, masked men broke into our house and took me with them. To make things worse, I have no idea what they did to Simon and my son. They drove me to a small private airstrip, and that's when I realized that Pablo must have tracked me down and was now bringing me back to Honduras. I cried the whole flight, hoping Simon and my son were still alive. Once I arrived, I was picked up by Pablo. He had a big grin on his face and said, How are you, my sweetheart? He tried to hug me, but I pushed him away, screaming, What have you done to Simon and my baby? Instead of answering, he just smiled and told me to get into his car. I had no choice, so I did what I was told. When we arrived at his house, I immediately felt like a prisoner. Now that we are finally reunited, I'm going to marry you as soon as possible. Let's say tomorrow. And before you think of saying no, remember, I know where your mom lives. I was devastated. My son and boyfriend were gone, and now I had to marry Pablo. As a sick joke, he even invited my mom to our wedding. She was very happy to see me marry into a rich family because she didn't know how miserable I was. The ceremony was weird. It was only me, Pablo, the pastor, and my mom. At the altar, I asked him, why me? Why not some other girl? Oh, it's because the more you despise me, the more I feel attracted to you. Now shut up and kiss me. That was the beginning of my new life. I was a prisoner in a gilded cage, but actually it wasn't as bad as I had imagined it. Because I was still allowed to go out as long as Pablo's bodyguards were with me at all times to make sure I wouldn't run away again. I drove around in armored luxury SUVs to go shopping, but it felt wrong spending Pablo's money because my country is so poor, and I hated living in luxury while there were so many kids begging on the streets. Of course, I also didn't forget Simon and my son. I promised myself I'd run away and find out what happened to them, to see if they were still alive. But then the worst thing happened. Pablo had gotten me pregnant. Now I was trapped. There was no way I'd run away and leave my baby with Pablo but if I took him with me, Pablo would hunt me down again. Luckily, when I gave birth to my second son, Lucas, Pablo's dad, Emmanuel, started spending a lot of time with us because he wanted to get to know his grandson. And as I got to know Emmanuel, I realized that he was actually a very decent man. That's why I told him how his son, Pablo, was mistreating me. His reaction surprised me. He said, Yes, I know that my son is an idiot. He doesn't know how to treat a woman right. But I promise that if you raise my grandson well, so he's nothing like his father, I'll make sure he gets my full inheritance. Then he told Pablo to never disrespect me again or he'd regret it. I knew I was part of the family now and not just some bimbo anymore. Pablo's dad gave me my own house and the baby, as well as a monthly allowance. It's not a bad life and I love Lucas dearly, but I'm also still thinking a lot about Simon and my first son. I've already tried to contact them, but either they are hiding or dead and in heaven.